Hi, thank you for your interest in this podcast. My name is Chris and uh, we'll be talking more about uh, commodity derivatives uh, follow on from uh, the grains market, but something about the commodities going global. What do I mean by going global? We've recently introduced uh, foreign reference commodities, which gives you access to the international commodity space. But before we get there, let me tell you more about some of the history and, and how we in this fortunate position. Um, back in 2008, uh, we got res approval from the South African Reserve Bank to be able to follow on and, and list uh, foreign reference commodities. And if we look at that, we went out and fortunate enough to sign a licensing agreement with the CME Group. The CME Group, for those of you who don't know, is the world's largest and, and leading derivative exchange, um, offering a number of, of derivative products. Where we were really aiming at is following on from the successful grain markets is the Chicago Board of Trade corn contract. Now that is the world benchmark for yellow maize, or as South Africans would know it as yellow corn. And um, we are fortunate to, to sign the leasing, uh, licensing agreement and launch then the corn contract back in 2000, January of 2009. If you look at the, the price chart that we've got there, we're really just trying to plot the difference between the local market, the white maize market, and the international corn market. And you'll see the bottom line really showing you that spread, that difference. And that is really a function of, of what is happening in South Africa versus the international market. And what we achieved by listing the corn contract on the JSC platform was the ability for South African investors, not only South Africans, but any foreign entity interested in trading that spread uh, on a single platform and making sure that we could margin it. We could also provide you offset margin. So you wouldn't need to put down the full initial margin in South Africa and then go and trade the product in Chicago. Now you've got really a one-stop, one screenshot to be able to trade both the Chicago corn and then the South African white or yellow maize contract. So if we just look at the, a summary of the contract specs, and really there's no rocket scientists in, the, in the, the contract spec design. We simply go and try and mirror the international reference market as closely as possible. So we, we selected the same um, expiry months that Chicago has, namely the March, May, July, September, and December. They trade in bushels. We wanted to just give it a South African feel and also make it easier to compare with the local grain market. So we trade a 100 metric ton contract. So, yeah, they've got 5,000 bushels. No headache for South Africans. Everything still stays in tons. And then um, the important thing is all these foreign reference commodities are quoted and traded in rand. Um, so we bring it back to the local currency. And the important thing at the end of the day is these things are cash settled. It's not that you are going to get physical delivery of corn in a warehouse in the States or you're going to get a physical delivery of gold, copper, platinum, and any of the other products that we trade. They are always cash settled off the reference uh, international market. The qualifying audience is similar to the currency futures that we trade, similar to the IDX products that we trade, and so you need to just be aware of those restrictions, particularly if you're a pension fund, a long-term insurance scheme, asset manager, or a collective investment scheme. Uh, for individuals, foreigners, or any corporates, Good news, there's unlimited exposure to these products um, simply through your broker or your registered account on the JSC derivatives market. Um, the other good drive that we've pushed for is that everything needs to be executed on the main trading window, on the main central order book. So, yes, we do allow for reports only transactions, but really that must stem out of trading activity outside of our core trading hours. So, you'll find that all the liquidity is there in front of you on your trading window. More recently, we've also added the soya bean complex, and this really just assists the, the local importers of proteins, the, the soy meal, um, to be able to also hedge themselves. And if there's any speculator out there who feels that there is a, um, a, a trade on, on the go between U.S. corn versus U.S. soybeans, again, the JSC product will be able to facilitate that type of trade. If we look at the other foreign commodities listed, and let's pay attention to the metals and energy. We've done the same process as we've done with corn and gone and looked at the international um, products. And so today, although the JSC has been able to offer you gold for many, many years, we now offer you the international gold price in rand. The important thing, yes, it is in rand. But um, whatever happens on the international gold market will filter through onto that product. Uh, we have platinum, we have copper, 
silver, and then also a crude oil contract which bench, benchmarks the West Texas Intermediate uh, Oil Contract. Let's have a careful look at the contract size, the nominal. So whatever one rand move, you need to then multiply by the nominal to understand if you're making money or if you are hedging which way the market is moving. From a crude oil point of view, we trade 100 US barrels and we've selected four expiry months. Those four expiry months are really in line with the most liquid expiry months in the US on the New York Mercantile Exchange. So NYMEX is the reference exchange where WTI crude oil trades and there we have February, June, August and December expiries. If we look at gold, the benchmark being COMEX. Also uh, in, in New York, is, is headquartered in New York, 10 troy ounce. It's a mini version of, of the, the US product, but again, giving you access, easy access um, via online trading platforms. It's lower initial margin requirements because we're not trading 100 ounce, it's only 10 ounces. So a mini contract for the retail client. We also have a 10 ounce platinum contract. The fantastic news is we've been able to um, tie up two expiry months between gold and platinum namely the April and October expiry. So should you wish to trade um, the gold platinum spread, you could also do that and we would also provide you offset margin requirements. On the copper side, recently introduced a 2,500 pound contract with a March, July, September and December expiry and then for silver, 500 toy ounces with the same expiries as copper. Um, all those products, you can trade both futures and options. Uh, options are recently introduced where um, on platinum we have a flat volatility surface that we use for mark to market purposes whereas the, the gold and plat uh, crude oil we're referencing the skew on, on the US market. But again, giving you those, that flexibility. If you'd like to trade via the options, that is certainly there. Often we get asked about liquidity of these instruments and that is, is for the first time a real big bonus because as an exchange, you often struggle with listing any new product to, to build that core liquidity. What we've done with the foreign reference commodities is really tapped into the liquidity of those international markets. So crude oil, WTI, the world's most liquid oil market is accessible to South Africans. And how do we achieve that is through market makers. They would simply be able to provide a, a tight spread that you'd see um, there, there is certainly a, a chart a bit later where you would actually see the quoting going on via the, the trading system and the market makers are quoting based off the bid offer spread in the US including the RAND, the necessary forward points to the expiry and you can then trade that product in RAND. Something to be aware of is many of the financial products have defined expiries evenly spaced throughout the year we don't have that luxury in this instance because we are referencing an underlying physical market in the States which then also has very specific uh, nuances. So if you'd look at the oil market, yes, we have a February expiry, but although we trade February, the contract tends to expire the middle of January. So please, before you start trading these products, be mindful of our trading calendar which is available on our webpage. Have a careful look at the last trading day for the contract. So although you might be trading a December copper contract, be mindful it's going to expire um, a few days uh, before we move into the December month. And so if you look at that uh, table that we've drafted, if May was a trading month, typically the 29th of April would be last trading day and the contract would then stop trading whenever the South African uh, contract uh, ceased trading. And the reason for stopping two days before is to be able to also give the market makers enough time to exit their hedge positions without the risk of going into physical delivery on that side. So something to be mindful of. The next chart simply shows how we calculate that final cash settlement value. Often we receive questions to say, hang on, the market makers are going to really drive this market into a certain direction and we're at their mercy. If you hold on to that position right until cash settlement, how we do get to that final value is by using trading data in the most liquid trading hours in New York or Chicago and then bringing in the spot rand a dollar exchange rate and we simply, if we need to bring bushels back to tons, we will do so. In the instance of the metals and oil, it's very easy. It's troy ounces um, and rand dollar exchange rate and we will then get to the rand settlement value. 
So the market maker needs to replicate that process also to be able to get to the final cash settlement value. So the, the possibility for any market abuse on that final cash settlement value is very, very, very small. So hopefully you've shown some interest in these products. Um, if you are, how do you access them? Well, again, these are the grain products are listed on the commodity derivative side, but we also have recently introduced a common trading window between the agricultural or the old agricultural, the commodity derivatives market, and the equity derivative members. So if you're registered with any of those members as a registered client, today you can just phone up your broker and ask them to open up the dedicated global market window and you would have instant access to these products. So no need to sign up separate client accounts just on the commodity side if you're already an equity derivative client. Have a look, careful look at the window um, in that same screenshot. There you can see all the commodities being quoted. And as I said, we are very fortunate to have four market makers already actively quoting on the, these contracts, which provides instant liquidity. Um, should you want to do a large trade, okay, fantastic that you're watching this podcast, but then really large orders, phone up the market makers. Their details are on the webpage. And uh, I'm sure they'd even be able to bring in that spread a lot tighter. So thank you once again for your attention. If there is any questions, there's our email address. It's an easy one, commodities at jac.co.za. And our web address is also on that slide. Please, we look forward to your queries. And once again, thank you for your attention. Have a great day.